Tensions in the Gulf drive the biggest weekly rise in oil prices for almost two months, while Austria feels the heat from the brewing crisis in Hungary. This is trading at 12, the market pulse. So Brent crude up around half of 1% today, not a particularly big move in itself, but the rise this week is some 6%, a rally not seen since mid-October last year. Supply disruption fears on mounting tensions between Iran and the West, trumping worries over, over economic growth. For more, I'm joined on the line by Gareth Lewis-Davies, an energy strategist at BNP Paribas. Gareth, a decent spike up in oil prices this week. Has that come on decent volume? Uh, yes, the volume this week, since started trading on Tuesday, has been back to, to normal levels. Uh, so there's some degree of confidence that the move uh, is, uh, has been uh, taken by many market participants. Uh, since the 19th of December, there has been a, 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 an overall increase of 11%, in fact. Uh, but that, a lot of that was done in the Christmas New Year period, where, where trading volumes are half of that. But we've seen decent volume this week. And Brent... Uh, Brent crude prices sitting just above the 200-day moving average, which today is around $112.75 a barrel. Where does the price go from here, near term, if that support holds, or indeed if it breaks? Uh, if it holds, uh, the next point, I suppose, would be $125 a barrel, which was last achieved uh, in, in April of this year. And for that to happen, we have to have confidence that demand for oil is continuing to increase. And clearly, if there are any additional uh, geopolitical tensions. In terms of it breaking, it would break down to around about $100 or so, which was last achieved uh, in October of last year. Gareth, thank you very much. Well, one of the big movers this week in European government bond markets has been Austria. Its banks are heavily exposed to Hungary, where controversial new laws have severely undermined confidence in the government and cast doubt over the independence of the central bank. With me now is Reuters government bonds correspondent Will James. Will, the rise in Austrian 10-year yields this week has been the biggest rise in some 20 years at least. Yeah. What are traders telling you? Um, do we take out the highs in yields and spreads that we saw in November last year? It certainly looks that way, uh, on, on track to really to take out those levels uh, and go beyond. Um, traders are finding it's a tricky tricky market to trade. It's not home turf for a lot of Eurogovies traders. Um, and you're trading at the, kind of, at the whim of Hungarian politics, which is tricky, but uh, does, isn't, doesn't seem to be a, an easy answer in sight for for the Hungarian problems. Um, so not the best backdrop for uh, Vienna's bond auctions next week. How mm. will those sales go, do you think? Um, no, it's, uh, it's, it's tricky. Uh, they're not the biggest sales, uh, just over a billion. Um, there's lots of ECB cash floating around, which should help demand for the shorter data of the bonds, but uh, there's lots of scope for, or there is scope for a poor auction result there, certainly. And some of, that, some of that contagion being seen in other areas of the Eurozone government bond market, where in particular? Definitely, yeah. Uh, all, all through the week um, this year, Spain's been trading very poorly. Um, there's been lots of budget revelations there, which has kind of taken the shine off the outperformance that we had at the start of, uh, sorry, at the end of last year. Um, so that, and the whole market's really trading, trading very poorly apart from Bund, so people are just seeking out the safest thing they can. Will, thank you very much. Well, that was today's Market Pulse. Join me at the same time each weekday for a look at all the big market trends and movers. I'm Jamie McGeever. This is Reuters.